through this course uh, pre-screen. Then it goes to the inside of the spine screen, and then after it travels outside, it goes to this chamber, and then back out. Um, <coughs> rotor uh, turns this. This is a gear, uh, like a worm gear right here, and so this disc actually travels back and forth between these two micro switches, which causes these uh, suction nozzles to uh, travel back and forth and clean the screen. Um, they do have a pretty good video we'll watch here of it kind of shows you just how, how they work. What's the maintenance and life of the, the filtration screens in those, or is it a replacement of the whole unit? You can replace the screens, but I, we rarely ever have yeah, to. Yeah. The nozzles don't actually make contact, so there's really nothing to wear out on them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had a customer who didn't winterize one and uh, they left water in, it was the, um, the ADFL, and uh, they left water in it in towards the inlet side where the water was, It actually the ice expanded, put a dent and tore a hole into the screen. Wow. And uh, the replacement on that, on my cost, no, $7,000 yeah. for that screen. Yeah. Wow. They're not cheap. Yeah, and all the bigger units they go up to about fifteen thousand. Yeah. Okay, so some of the things that might happen to an Amiod filter, uh, flushing, you know, when it's not clogged. Uh, could be uh, Amiod PSID switch malfunctioning or froze. Um, this actually senses the uh, upstream pressure and compares it to the downstream, and as soon as it reaches about a 7 PSI difference is about when this needle just touches the red. So as soon as it touches the red, it should cycle uh, a flush, should start a flush cycle and uh, clean the filter. Um, we do see these not get winterized at all, and so it will freeze inside there. And, uh, that would cause a problem. Uh, again, a 24 volt uh, DC circuitry. This does uh, have a signal that comes from from this uh, terminal here up to the PLC. That uh, gives the PLC the signal that to do a flush cycle. If it's flushing, uh, but the indicator stays in the red, that means the screen element's compacted, it's not cleaning it. It could be because uh, it can't pull it off of the, the screen. It could be because those no nozzles are not rotating. Uh, maybe they're rotating, but they're not traveling back and forth. Uh, some of the things to look at. Uh, so if you see the needle in the red, the, the filter's flushing, but it's just not cleaning, um, then we'll have to look and see why, why it's not cleaning or it's not traveling. Shear um, cutting from the worm gear shafts. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Occasionally, uh, we might see this when everything's operating normally. What they did was they didn't uh, drain the water out or flush. You know, they didn't flush the uh, filter through several cycles before they winterized it. And uh, a couple times I've seen them get, you know, kind of compacted on the screen. It's not quite enough to cause it to go into a flush cycle. Then they shut it down for the winter and drain it. Now all that stuff gets sits there and dries and sticks, dries. sticks on there. So. Tear it apart, take the element out, take it down to a car wash, and high pressure, high pressure it off and put it back in. I use muriatic acid. That works good. Yeah. Uh, again, section scanners are not rotating. Um, this shaft needs to be rotating. That's the pin that uh, Joe was talking about. It could shear that pin. Um, if it malfunctions and it travels too far, it's actually meant to shear off. So then this would just be sitting there, you know, spinning and going back and forth. But this one won't be, won't be turning those suction scanners on the inside of the filter. The pressure will keep it pushed up against that edge too. If you if you're wondering how come it's staying there, because the pressure when they open the valve will push the nozzle up right against now. that the, the worm gear and see so it'll ride up against it and that's spinning while it's going out. And then this, of course, will push it back in, not spinning it. So it's kind of, you got to watch, look carefully. 
sometimes. Yeah. Oh, and uh, some people will put bolts in there. Not a good idea. Unless you want to pay for a new nozzle assembly. <laughs> Seriously. You should keep that sheared, but something that was sheared. Told me we got five minutes. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, if it's not spinning at all, uh, occasionally you might uh, you can hear the valve open and it's trying to flush the debris out, but this isn't turning or moving at all. Uh, again, like I say, check this um, overload right here. Make sure it's not <coughs> tripped. Uh, if it is going through flush cycle, you should see these contactors. You know, pull one way or the other. Um, these go out to this motor. And like I say, that's what causes this motor to go forward and then re return backwards. Um, that, so could that bushing right there, that brass bushing, yeah, that brass bushing is like five hundred dollars. Really? Yeah, just that we just, bushing. We just sold one of those not too long ago. What kind of? I mean, that was that's that's not this price. Is it an ABS? Yeah, it's it's SAF. SAF, just like that. And, uh, I think you better call us for parts next time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, that sucker right there, man. I know it's expensive. I, for some reason, yeah. I'm he just sold one for seventy-five uh, hundred. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. They're really expensive. They're not cheap. And, and I have seen those where this uh, shaft is just sitting there spinning. If it's spinning and it's not traveling back and forth, uh, this this is brass. This is hard steel. This will yeah. just get eight, eight out. So it'll just sit in there and spin inside of that. Um, so you replaced that on a job recently? Me? Yeah. Oh, I'm several of them. But I mean, that's not, I mean, $428 plus tax and, then, and of course my markup, whatever. But uh, that, uh, it's very, it's one of the most common things people forget or they don't grease that spot right there. They use the wrong type of grease and you want to get a non-melting type of grease that's really you know, sticky. So that way if it gets washed out, you're not losing much and that's what will happen. People will neglect that portion of it and they'll take out that pushing. And then there's also a key in there that rides inside the motor. It looks like a little L shape, kind of like this. It's over exaggerated. But actually it locks that uh, that drive shaft into the motor. And the uh, and the and in the register in that drive shaft, of course it's standing still, but that key is square, square stock, and uh, a lot of times it'll wiggle and you'll start getting a wear in it. And if you look at it, sometimes the motor, when it's spinning, you'll actually see it get ready to move, that it'll stay still and it'll spin and then it'll go. And then you'll see it spin and it'll go the other way. Mm -hmm. And that's a good indication. And that right there, that slop will take up, will cause problem with the filter too. So um, if you're gonna replace the bearing, I recommend to go ahead and change that key out too. Same time, yeah. yeah. So what would that cost somebody? Oh, that one there's probably <laughs> 70 bucks or something. No, if you replace that, that brass piece and what would it, you would charge? Oh, that? I would. It would take me probably two hours to do it, but I charge in my minimum time of four probably. No, you have a minimum of four yeah. when you go out. Yeah, two yeah. hour drive time, two hour site. Wow, at what rate? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Southern California. 107 an hour. Is how much I charge? Yeah. So uh, another. I uh, think if, it, if everything is uh, looks like it's operating correctly, it's flushing, um, but the flush valve <coughs> isn't opening, then there's no uh, <coughs> there's no suction on the suction scanners on the inside. Um, this valve has to open, which causes uh, pressure difference from the inside of the filter to the out. Water wants to rush through those suction scanners and out, so that's what causes that vacuum effect. Um, so if this isn't opening, then it's... Um, Everything would be normal, but it, it won't pull the debris off of the screen. Uh, usually you can hear this valve open. It's pretty loud, so you, you know pretty much right away if the valve is opening or not. Uh, this small filter uh, comes into there. It's possible that that might be clogged. Um, it does take <coughs> pressure uh, through this line and pushes it down onto there. Usually if this is clogged, what will happen is it will open it during a flush cycle, but then it may not close completely. Terry, when we wet test the station with filters, I mean, is that part of the checklist? Test to make sure that the filters flush? Um, just just to run it through one cycle and make sure right. it, it flushes. That they open. Um, 
Yeah, there's a little test port right here. This is the easiest way. This uh, little valve, we do put on the front of the panel, we put a test off auto uh, HOA on there, and you can put it in test and it'll run through a cycle until you turn it back to off and auto. Um, what this little valve does, it actually tests the pressure differential switch also because this relieves this upstream pressure off down through this little tube. Um, and so you just have to turn that open for like not even a second and back close. As soon as you turn that open, you'll see this needle jump all the way clear up to the red and it'll start a flush cycle and just make sure it does that. The other thing is too is uh, even when you winterize, you know, even half a year, again, you get all the stuff that accumulates around those ports. If you can close that manometer, is what I'm going to cause it, that needle will go in the red, and if it doesn't go in the red and it's not doing anything, I would first check those ports. And because make sure that they're not clogged. If those ports are clogged, you're not going to get any pressure differential. And that's what that valve is doing, is making a pressure differential, because the one side is coming in high pressure and you're relieving the low side, just like as if you had a high pressure differential on the filter. Yeah. So uh, I would check the ports first before thinking that maybe the valve is bad. Yeah, and you that's, take that off right yeah. there pretty easily. And those freeze pretty easily too. You got to open yep. them and make sure and not drain. On the smaller filter, you go and make sure it's not pressurized. Oh, well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying it because it happens a lot. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, frozen piston. Um, <clears throat> This doesn't happen. That this was pretty common, and uh, Amiad. Uh, we told Amiad about it. They got with uh, Asco Red Hat valve, and I guess they solved the problem. But uh, there's a little metal slug that sits in here, and the water mm -hmm. would seep yeah. past there and accumulate in the end, and then you'd winterize it. There's no way to get that water out, and then you would come back the next uh, spring, and this would be domed out right. instead yeah. of dished in, and then it wouldn't ever open the valve. Uh, one thing to check, you can, there's a little red cap on the end of that that you can just flip open and look and see if it's in a place where it gets you know, frozen or something. But like I say, the last few years we haven't had that problem with the newer filters. Anybody have any questions on Amiot filters? Um, any other? I'd like, to, I'd like to add, the most common thing I find on these filters that go bad are rubber. O-rings, yeah. Period. So you got O-rings in here. Yeah, you got O-rings right there. If you go back up a little bit, I guess if you go to the to blow up the schematic there. <coughs> okay, on each one, each end of the filters, you've got you. old seals yeah, on, the, on the end cap and on the other side right there. Okay, on top of that, you have an O-ring here in the middle here where you get an access port right here from the nozzle assembly, right there for... Uh, uh, right there before where the hole is right there. That O-ring right there and the O, yes. And then the O-ring up front. It's basically the one here by the nozzle because you want to make that good vacuum seal, if you know what I mean. When you're saying, when you when the valve opens, you want that suction to pull through the nozzles. If that O-ring in between that nozzle assembly right there is blown out, you're not going to get any suction. Yeah, all your wire is going to try to escape. escape yeah, you're not going to get any cleaning. And that goes, that same goes with the EBS. These are the SAFs. Um, I guess you got the, what, 3,500 and 6,000. They're basically SAFs, they're all the same. But the EBS are simply, they're almost built the same way, but only fatter. But uh, my, my find that uh, to get good cleaning, <coughs> if you're going to do maintenance, just go and spend uh, $200 for the end seals and the 50 cents for the yeah. O-rings. Because there's quite a bit to take them apart. If yeah. you to take it apart, you, you might as well change it all. And then, you're, and then bam, you just yeah. knocked out a park and you know it's going to be running great for you when you walk away, and then at least another year. And again, now I've heard on me, I recommend that they want you to tear down your valve every one year and look at it. Well, again, now you're looking at customers that only use it for half a year. Well, then every two years. So I'll have customers that have that do that, and I, every two years I'll just go in there, take it apart, clean it whether it needs it or not, put in new seals and everything like that. And it, it actually helps prevent. That, that time shut down during their busy season. That's you really do that what it is. Do that as a service contract? Hmm? No, I don't do service contracts. Okay. It's a time of material. 